Chelsea Anawi is a second year cognitive psychology major and music minor and student of the Honors College at Westminster. She was born in California, spent time in Nigeria, and now calls Utah her home. As a student of psychology, she enjoys learning about the human mind, behavior, and the way individuals think. As the associate second violinist in the Westminster Chamber Orchestra, she fills all her spare time with music. Examining the intersection of music and psychology is part of Chelsea's day-to-day -day existence. Please welcome to the stage, Chelsea Anawi. Hi. Uh, today, I'd like to talk to you all about what it means to do enough. We live in a world where we are constantly doing and doing and doing. And even when we're not doing, we are doing. And then when we're done, we suddenly have more to do, or we think we could have done it better, and so we do some more and some more and some more. Show of hands, does anyone ever feel like they are perpetually doing? My singular hope is the next time you find yourself in a downward despairing spiral of doing, the next time you find yourself distressed because you feel like you haven't done enough or you're not quite at perfection's threshold, I hope you'll remember this presentation. So here's my story about doing. Okay. I spent this past summer in California visiting my uncle's family. My uncle runs a nonprofit organization known as Cry Out. Cry Out was having his first music internship and naturally a violinist like me was excited to be surrounded by music and musicians. A couple of days before the showcase that would cap off the crowd internship, I was sitting in my aunt's car. She was talking to me about the Enneagram of personality. The word Enneagram is derived from the Greek word ennea, meaning nine, and gramma, which means something written or drawn. The Enneagram of personality is an ancient model that illustrates nine interconnected personality types. Now you can take tests online to figure out what type you are on the Enneagram, but be aware that there is very limited psychometric analysis on this um, and peer reviewed research. It is an ancient model and a personality test. Um, my aunt loved to talk about the Enneagram. I didn't really care, but I humored her out of politeness. Um, then she said the magic word, music. As a formally trained violinist, a self-taught pianist, and a closeted singer, music was the word that made me swing my head around and pay attention. My aunts told me about a musician who had written nine songs about the nine Enneagram types. She knew, because I had told her, that um, I was an Enneagram type three since I had taken a couple of tests. Um, and so on the car stereo, she played the song the artist had written for my type. Maybe I've done enough. Those are the first lyrics of the song. I fell in love with the song immediately, but I later realized I didn't quite understand what the song was trying to say. What does it mean to say out loud, to acknowledge that I've done enough, and just to be fine with that? When was the last time you told yourself, I've done enough, and to you truly, that was enough? The showcase for Cry Out was coming up. Um, I was a violinist, so it was expected that I would play the violin at the showcase. I expected that I would play the violin at the showcase. But I struggled to create something that I thought was good enough. In the world I was trained in, technique mattered. Music, not so much. And because the world I was trained in was so precise, I had begun to believe there was a right way to make music. In that world of sheet music and technicians, there was perfect music and there was substandard music. To do enough meant to put on a perfect performance. On the day of the showcase, I decided I would not play the violin. The violin was important to me and it demanded perfection and precision from me. And if I felt short of flawlessness, I would be a failure. I decided not to play the violin because I was afraid of not living up to the rigid expectations that I had set for myself. Instead, I performed three, the three song. It was a few repetitive piano chords to lyrics that were read off of my phone. Nothing fancy. I didn't expect much else from myself. I'd only had a few hours to prepare the piece, but the audience loved it. A few days after the showcase, 
the cryo interns were invited to perform at a fundraising event in a week. And I was scheduled to be one of the events, and I was to perform three because it had been such a hit at the showcase. That's when panic started to set in. This wasn't just a performance at a showcase for a couple of people I knew. This was a gig at a fundraising event where the willingness of the audience to donate would be directly affected by the quality of the performances they witnessed. So all of a sudden, there were stakes involved. Has that ever happened to you? Where you, for the lack of a better word, poppycocked your way through something, only to be told that it was amazing and you needed to do it again? Have you? Have you ever taken the easy way through something and had something turn out way better than you'd ever expected? The dark shadows came back. <laughs> they were shadows that would measure me against the ruler of perfect performances, shadows that already knew I would be found lacking and insufficient. It didn't matter if I was playing the violin or singing or playing the piano, I would never be able to do enough. The day before the showcase, I was still in shambles. I was making mistakes I'd never made before. My fingers weren't hitting the right keys on the piano. My voice didn't sound quite right. The music sounded empty in my ears. It was there, but I couldn't hear it. So I needed more. It wasn't enough. So I started adding all sorts of try-hard notes on the piano to make those intentionally slow-moving interludes sound a little more exciting. We even decided to record me playing the violin to supplement the performance. It came out terribly. I have never been so disgusted with my own playing. Nevertheless, I tried to play along with the violins and the click track and all the other techie stuff we'd thrown into the mix to make that naked little performance appear a little more dressed up. Has that ever happened to any of you? Have you ever decided to be so over the top and so unnecessarily extra and have things turn out so terribly that you regret ever even trying? Have you ever fallen into that trap of perfection and just more? We had to finish for the day. Um, I remember sitting at the piano and trying to make sense of what I was playing and what I was hearing and what I was singing and it just wasn't working. Um, out of the corner of my eye, I spotted my uncle talking to Lael, the man who had gotten us the fundraising gig in the first place. Um, and I felt upset. It's like the shadows were looking down on me, shaking their heads in distaste and disappointment. Um, as we finished for the day and I prepared to leave, Lael caught up with me. And he told me to scratch all the violins and all the pre-recorded stuff and just play as I'd done during the showcase. He said, three was a piece written to be vulnerable and to strip it of that deliberate exposure was to rob the music of the meaning it was trying to convey. I needed to stop trying so hard and I needed to stop trying to do so much. So we gutted the piece back to the original, just the piano and the voice. The day of the fundraiser came and I was still unsure. I seriously debated getting my act canceled somehow, but I <laughs> just kept replaying Lael's words in my head, don't, go on, don't perform, just go on stage and be yourself, you are enough. It was the first time in a long time that I felt myself breathe and begin to enjoy being on stage. For me, feeling empty and despairing after performance had become normal. That constant striving for perfection that I could never obtain had taken my passion for music and turned it into a kind of exhausting obsession. I had to realize it wasn't about putting on a perfect performance for the donors at the fundraiser. I made mistakes and I made a lot of them, but I didn't psych myself out over that. I just kept playing, I just kept singing, and I just kept making music. That was the piece I was missing, the reason why it couldn't all come together when I was overthinking it and overcomplicating it. The type three personalities are commonly known as the performers or achievers, fitting titles for someone like me. Three was a song meant as a repose from the constant performing, the constant achieving, the constant striving to be something I'm not struggling to touch a bar that was set just out of my reach. To live a better life, I realized I needed to change my perspective. 
That was the reason why that initial flaw field performance had seemed, ironically, so flawless. I needed to understand that I didn't need to do or I didn't need to achieve, I didn't need to be perfect in order to be seen or loved or acknowledged. I didn't need to do, I only needed to be. Perhaps that's something a lot of people need to hear. Perhaps that's something a lot of college students need to hear. I think we're all predisposed to want to do well, to be amazing, to be the smartest kid in class, and to be known for it. And when that doesn't happen, we start to feel ashamed. Constantly trying and trying and trying so hard, doing more than you are physically capable of, burning yourself out again and again and again to attain that inherently unattainable perfection. We're in this perpetual state of ceaseless doing. And why do we do this to ourselves? Do we really believe the world expects that kind of perfection from us? Not going to class because you didn't do the reading for whatever reason, not turning in that paper because you didn't seem, think it was good enough. We, because of the feeling that we haven't done enough, we begin to feel ashamed and we dig ourselves into a hole as we obsess. I guess all I'm asking, and maybe I'm asking too little, or some of you might think I'm asking too much, but I'm asking you to recognize when you've tried your best. Recognize when you've done enough. Your best. Your own very best. And if that is your best on a bad day, and that's barely getting it off the ground, then it's still your best. And that's enough. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Trophies in the real world. And we saw 